sidekicks. Every good superhero or world conquering scientist needs one, right, Boomstick? That's right! Hey, I think we all know which one of us is the real sidekick here. Such as the Winter Soldier, Marvel's brainwashed assassin. And Red Hood, DC's resurrected Robin turned vigilante. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. World War II. As strange as it is to name a war a sequel like some sort of movie, it was a time of turmoil across the globe. The brave and patriotic did their part, including one James Buchanan Barnes, known by his friends as Bucky. As a young lad, Bucky ripped open a standard superhero booster pack to find classic cards like dead parents and deep desire to fight for justice. And that combo served him well in the U.S. military. He joined at the age of 15 and eventually got recruited for special assignments and training with British commandos. Not long after that, he became friends with his own personal hero and the country's favorite Boy Scout, Captain America. Bucky was initially unaware of the captain's secret identity until one night he walked in on Steve Rogers changing into his costume. <laughs> well, I guess that's one way to get to know a guy. Luckily, Cap had a lot of faith in Bucky and asked him to become his partner in crime, or hero work. They fought side by side, kicking Nazi ass throughout the rest of the war. The duo seemed to be unstoppable until one fateful mission when they leapt after a plane to catch Nazi scientist Baron Zemo. Fortunately for Bucky, he was able to grab onto the plane while Cap fell into the ocean to nab his last diving merit badge. Get it? Cause because he's a Boy Scout. Unfortunately for Bucky, the plane was booby-trapped and exploded. It appeared as though the captain's loyal sidekick had been killed. But the ones we love in comic books never truly leave us. Sometime after the war, a Russian submarine discovered Bucky's body preserved in the icy waters of the English Channel. They decided to scoop him up and experiment on him. Because why not? Who could pass up a free body you found? even if it was missing an arm. Bucky's training and experience made him the perfect candidate as the ultimate assassin. And after they revived and brainwashed him, they outfitted him with a shiny new bionic arm. Turning Bucky into the Winter Soldier. Along with this new persona, the Winter Soldier sported a sundry of skills throughout his career that made him a killing machine. For starters, he was injected with the Infinity Formula, which permanently increased his physical ability to an enhanced state. This made him quite the formidable foe even for Captain America, a foe who seemingly abandoned the values the duo previously shared. These two have fought plenty of times and Bucky's been able to hold his own against his former partner. His advanced strength and speed coupled with his knowledge of various fighting styles make for a lethal combination. He's skilled in everything from hand-to-hand -hand close quarters combat to an impressive arsenal of ranged weaponry. Oh yeah, he's got a ton of sweet guns that are outfitted with some nifty palm print sensors, so only he can shoot them. If anyone other than the Winter Soldier tries to use these firearms, they will self-destruct. He also wields a katana, throwing knives, pretty much whatever comes in the welcome bag at Assassin Con. Always a good time at Ascon. Ugh. But we can't forget his most iconic piece, the arm. Well, I mean, it's definitely the coolest metal arm I've ever seen. What about mine? I made it myself. Come on, Wiz, look at that thing. His is super buff, plus it's got a flamethrower, a retractable blade, it can emit electric charges, and it's so strong, knives break on impact. It's not about the size of the arm, it's how you use it. Well, sure, it's strong, but it's not indestructible. It's been torn up by a vibranium sword. Wait, wait, I thought the arm was made of vibranium. You're thinking of the movies. In the comics, Bucky did not receive a vibranium arm birthday present from T'Challa. Canonically, his arm is made up of strong but unspecified metals, likely a form of titanium alloy similar to the Iron Man suit. Even without vibranium, it's tough to keep up with Bucky. He took a direct shot from Iron Man's repulsor blast, which was strong enough to tear through a helicopter moments later. And consider the heroes he's battled. Wolverine, Daredevil, Iron Man, and obviously Captain America. Oh, it's a shame Bucky and Cap were at odds for so long. They should have just knocked him on the head real good. That's the scientific way to get people to remember who they are, right? Or you can use a cosmic cube to rewrite their memories. That's what Captain America did to save Bucky. Who was so pissed off, he just straight up crushed the cube with his bare bionic hand. 
While this brought him back, Bucky wasn't the same man who went into those icy waters. His remorse for his crimes was tough to overcome, and he would always wonder if he's done enough good to finally redeem himself. But thankfully, it was hard to shake everything he learned from his hero, Steve. Bucky returned to fighting for justice, and even took up the shield himself for a while. Proving that, despite his sordid past, Bucky's persistence and resilience makes him a hero in his own right. When you think of the word sidekick, who immediately comes to mind? You. It's you. N no, Robin, the boy wonder, Batman's iconic crime-fighting partner. Yeah, it's a close second. Too bad the Cape Crusader's sidecar has been a revolving door of orphans and agrobats. Not including alternate universes and what-if stories, Batman has taken five different Robins under his bat wing. Some moved on to pursue a superhero career of their own. Others didn't turn out so lucky. Enter Jason Todd. This poor kid was given the short end of the stick, and then the fans beat him to death with it. Jason grew up on the streets of Gotham, getting by through a life of petty crime, until eventually running into the Batman himself. By trying to steal the rims off the Batmobile. This kid's got some serious balls. I mean, you can't exactly look at the damn Batmobile and mistake it for someone else's car. Bruce had recently split up with the first Robin, Dick Grayson, and was on the lookout for a new sidekick. Impressed by Jason's scrappiness and latent ability, he had the 12-year-old suit up. Yes, he really was 12. Yikes! Well, creepy child abducting habits aside, Bats hoped he could live up to the last Robin. Too bad this was a literal dick measuring contest that Jason had no chance in. Despite some moderate success, Jason wasn't exactly an extraordinary Robin. And the fans saw it too. In an unprecedented move, DC asked their readers to vote on whether or not Jason Todd would live or die. Yep, they voted to kill the shit out of that kid, Joker style. On an unrelated note, if you want to see Wiz die a horrible, gruesome death that will lead to some serious mental health issues, call 555-2337 or 555-BEER. Jason Todd was dead. Until Superboy Prime punched a hole in the fabric of reality and accidentally brought him back. True story, don't ask. And after a dip in a magic hot tub, the Lazarus Pit, Jason was back in top form. Take that, readers! Your contribution means nothing! Resolve renewed, Jason donned a new identity inspired by his own killer, the Red Hood. While the freaky death pit did bring him back stronger and faster, it turns out resurrection comes at a price. Jason was already a hothead, but Red Hood had a serious temper with violent outbursts. He wasn't all right in the noggin. But he had a goal. Destroy Batman and show him his humane methods were unfit for saving Gotham City. If Bats had actually killed the Joker way back when, he never would have killed Jason in the first place. For a raging psychopath, he's not exactly wrong. Where Batman failed, Jason was up for the task. He pushed himself to become a killing machine even Bruce would have a tough time keeping up with. Even training with the League of Assassins and the All Cast, a group of monk assassins. So much ass stuff in this episode. In addition to Red Hood's wide array of skills, he also maintains a serious collection in his arsenal. Most obviously, his armored cowl. While it provides him with sturdy protection, the sensors within also allow him to scan his surrounding area, neutralizing any potential stealth threats. Plus, the hood can also explode, so that's convenient. Sounds like my new hangover recipe. On top of the red chrome dome, Jason packs all sorts of knives, explosives, guns, and he even wants some of these weird magic swords called the All Blades to fight off supernatural threats. But probably most important is his continual use of venom. Wait, 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 what's the symbiote doing here? No, no, the venom drug. It's what Bane uses to get all, you know, swole. Wiz, have you ever been to the gym, like even once? Dummy, I'm here to carry your arbitrary burdens. Venom is an addictive steroid that increases strength and stamina tenfold. A normal dose also affects the mind, dumbing it down and causing bouts of rage. But Jason's- <laughs> Superpowers, here I come! You can call me the Red Neck! No, 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 you're supposed to inject it- <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Clean that up. Using Venom has made Red Hood strong enough to fight off monsters twice his size, tear through alien tendrils, and even once break the grip of Supergirl. He can hold up a small part of a collapsing building, dodge bullets, and even once survived an all-cast ritual called the cleansing, which no human has been able to do in over a thousand years. And while it was difficult to determine if this feat was due to Jason's worthiness or stubbornness, it's safe to say that either way, he's a tough guy. Tough enough to punch through a submarine hull, or at least he carries enough explosives to blow a hole through it. Either way, I wouldn't want to go one-on-one -on -one with this guy. Red Hood also has plenty of that bat-like stealth ability to match his brute strength. He was able to sneak away from Supergirl. Even Bruce will be proud of that one. Despite how Jason tried to kill him. But the Red Hood failed, and was left to re-examine his own personal code. He ultimately decided to be a hero again, albeit a very conflicted one. He even teamed up with Bats and even worked alongside other Robins. He also leads a group of ragtag heroes called the Outlaws. The roller coaster of Red Hood's crime-fighting career has, at best, landed himself in that anti-hero sweet spot, and at worst, made him a violent vigilante who takes the law into his own hands. Those are the heads of all your lieutenants. That took me two hours. You want to see what I can get done in a whole evening? All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a death battle! Yo, Barbie. Jason, it's me. What do you want, Bruce? Eight assassins from the League of Shadows were gunned down two miles from your current location. Sounds like a party. They were all shot with rounds from a modified M4. A gun I know is in your arsenal. <laughs> as much as I'd love to take credit for that one, it wasn't me. Don't lie to me. It wasn't me, Bruce. But you know what? You can count on me to crack the case. In fact, I believe there's a bit of evidence that demands my attention right now. Jason. closed. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's not coming. No one. Shut up! Sorry, Bruce. This is Agent Barnes. Target eliminated. Moving on. K.O. Oh, talk about a headache. These two were quite evenly matched. They both had wells of experience, similar arsenals, and an unparalleled drive to win. They even had almost identical speed and reactionary feats. And Jason definitely had better stealth skills. However, Bucky Barnes earned the edge in almost every other way. Like how Red Hood had plenty of experience training with Batman and assassins, but Wendy had decades of training on him with commandos, as the captain's side piece, an emo assassin, and even as Captain America himself. The Winter Soldier also had an edge in defense. His metal arm was able to shatter a knife on impact, but when Red Hood took a similar hit, his helmet cracked. Red really didn't have any way to stop that arm for good, or Bucky's superhumanness. Sure, using Venom could even the playing field for a short time, but a brief power-up is nothing compared to a metal arm and the permanent infinity formula. And don't take Jason breaking Supergirl's grip out of context. She wasn't expecting the Venom, and they weren't even fighting in the first place. It's interesting, but not nearly as noteworthy as it sounds. Yeah, we know for a fact Venom is a 10 times strength booster. There's no way Red could match a Kryptonian in a real brawl. Red Hood was a deadly combatant, but the Winter Soldier one-upped him with superior experience, survivability, and a consistent strength advantage. Looks like Bucky was the Winter! The winner is the Winter Soldier. Thanks for watching this episode of Death Battle. Come back next week to see previews of our upcoming matchups. If you want to watch more stuff, you can click the boxes right around here, and you can always pick up some DV merch at store.roosterteeth.com. So many snacks, so little time. Ragnarok? <laughs>